out there. Good morning, C3. Good morning. Yes. I need you guys awake today. I need you taking notes. I need you leaning in and not fogging out. So, um, but hey, we are so excited you guys are here with us today. And we are just like almost a week away from Christmas. How many of you guys just had anxiety and want to go throw up in your mouth like me? Like... <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, can Amazon still deliver? You know what I mean? Like, so hey, I do want to let you know, like over in the cafe, we do have uh, Real Hope Worship and some t-shirts and cups, just fun stuff like that, that make great stocking stuffers. And then also our team that's going to Guatemala is selling t-shirts to raise money for the trip. So um, you can email me or whatever, and I, we can send you a link, or if you know the team that's going, but those make great uh, Christmas gifts and stuff. But um but we are excited that Christmas is coming. And December 23rd, which is a week from tomorrow on Monday, we have our first Christmas Eve Eve service at 7 p.m. And then on the 24th, we have two services, 2 and 4 p.m. And so let me encourage you to, you know, be praying about who you need to invite and then bring people. This is a season even more so than Easter where people are open to coming to church, if for no other reason, just for tradition. And so it's an easy invite. So don't let this time pass you by, but just be praying and invite and bring. And if you forget to pray, that's okay. God is okay if you just invite and bring. So let's just be and have, telling people about what's going on and stuff. And then before we go on, I do want to take a minute just to honor Pastor Matt, he's actually watching online. He was in the first service, but he's getting ready for the Christmas Eve services. We're kind of letting him rest up and stuff. But um, this past week, he graduated from SEU with his master's degree. So super proud of him. Our daughter graduated with her bachelor's and our son also graduated. So just super excited about that. We believe in, in a biblical worldview and biblical education. Um, John, our student minister, finished his bachelor's degree and will be graduating or walking in the spring. So just love, and that's why we have a C3 college. You may not even realize that, but love giving people just a biblical worldview and helping them learn the Bible and how the Bible is applicable for every area of your life. So we have two tracks. We actually have a ministry leadership track, which is hands-on experience and the educational track. So if that even kind of resonates with you, something you might love, uh, we have a table out in the lobby just talking more about the college and stuff. Well, today we are in a series called King of Kings, and this series actually is going to carry us through our Christmas Eve services. And so I just want to encourage you right now to get something out to take notes with. You're going to write, want to write some things down. You're going to want to come back and revisit it, maybe go watch it online again. But um, I'm going to be reading from Isaiah 9. This is kind of our theme verse, our key verse that even Pastor Matt's been preaching from. But it says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this." And so Matt has talked about the wonderful counselor and he even asked us the question, like, who is the counselor? Who is sitting in your counselor seat? And he had a couch and a, a chair up here. And if you didn't see that sermon, I want to encourage you, you can go watch it. And then last week he talked about that he's a mighty God. He is all powerful and he is a strong God. And today we're going to look at that God, that Jesus is our everlasting father. He is our everlasting father. And I'm so excited to get to, to just teach on this and tell you about this. I have in, in coaching, I teach on this all the time and help people to understand and walk in freedom and what we're getting ready to share with you. But God is our heavenly father. And so we have a heavenly father, but then you can't talk about your heavenly father without acknowledging your earthly father because we have an earthly father. And so if there is anything that we need a Savior for, it's in our Father relationship. 
because our, our father relationship needs, some of it needs to be redeemed, some of it needs to be restored, but God is our perfect, everlasting father. Now, some of you have great dads. And some of you, like me, you had a great dad. My dad's in heaven. This, he, he passed away in June, went to be with his heavenly father. And so this will be our first Christmas without him. But for many of you, you didn't have and don't have a great relationship with your dad. And some of the greatest pain in our lives come from our relationships with our dad. Maybe your dad was never there Maybe he abandoned you when you were very little. Maybe it wasn't even his fault. Maybe he died and he just wasn't there for pivotal moments when you really needed him. Maybe he was physically present, but he wasn't really there. If you know what I mean, he was always too busy and never really paid much attention to you. Maybe all you can remember is how disappointed he always seemed to be with you. Or maybe you just never really felt any connection to him. This is the kind of thing like when you call home and your dad answers the phone, when he finds out it's you, he's like, hey, Martha, phone. Because dads sometimes don't know how to talk to their kids. And so they, they use the mom as the conduit for all conversations. Maybe your dad was abusive. And I know in a church this size, there's lots of people who are physically, emotionally, and even sexually abused by their dads. The reason I know that It's because I've worked with a lot of you and I've had lots of conversations through the years and helping you really find freedom in that. But whatever the reason is, there's a lot of pain brought on when you think about your father. And so today when I say, hey, we're going to talk about God's our heavenly father. He's our everlasting father. Some of you, if you're already checked out, you're like, can we leave now? Like I, I'm out. Your anxiety is starting to rise. You're on your phone. You're like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling right now. And that's because when we talk about fathers, it brings up, it just brings up emotions you just don't even understand. I have a great friend who wrote a book. Her her name's Lisa Jeanette, and she wrote a book when I last saw me. And to this day, she can't even say the name father when she talks about her dad because he was so abusive and so cruel. So she calls, as she got to know her heavenly father, she calls her heavenly father her real dad. And if you ever have a conversation with Lisa and she's talking about God and she talks about God all the time, she's going to call him her real dad. And so unfortunately, this is the experience a lot of uh, people have experienced in our society is our relationships with our earthly dads are so powerful and so influential that it shapes how we see and understand God. And so dads carry a, a, a great weight. So today... I want us to take a look at a couple of our father wounds and how we can overcome and heal. So I promise I'm not going to just stir things up and then we're going to dismiss. And then you get to go just deal with this open wound. Now, I'm going to kind of stir some things up, but then we're going to come to a resolution. And you will leave here kind of on a great journey, just full of peace and hope. And so we are going to look at some father wounds, but then we're going to look at who is God really? Because if we see our heavenly father through the eyes of our earthly father, we've got to see who is our earthly father. And then we got to separate the two and say, okay, who is God really? And today I hope when you leave here, you know a little bit more about who God is. So the first thing is, is you got to know who God is. Hey, who's your daddy, right? Right. Who's your heavenly daddy? Who is God? Don't get your dads mixed up. Don't get your earthly father and your heavenly father mixed up. And this is what we do. We, we, we look to our earthly father and we completely trust them. And they want, we want them to provide everything and be everything and be the great I am. And they always are going to disappoint because they're sinners in need of a savior just like us. And then We go to our heavenly father and we're mad at him and we think he's abusive and he's abandoned us and all this stuff. And we've mixed up the two. And today I want to help us to separate the two and know how to deal with the two different fathers in our life. One of the father father wounds that we have is that our dads are just never satisfied. You have the never satisfied earthly dad. He's just never satisfied. They weren't necessarily abusive but they never said, I'm proud of you. They're always telling you how you could have done better. Like, okay, well, could you, if you'd have just run faster, if you'd have just done this better, if you'd have just written along, everything's just, it's just never quite good enough. 
But I just want you to know today that God is satisfied with you. God loves you and he is satisfied with you. In Zephaniah 3, 17, it says, the Lord your God is in your midst. He's around you. A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. And he will exult over you with loud singing. How exciting that God is always with you. And and he rejoices over you with loud singing. He's singing to you. Kind of like a Christmas movie. I love you. I love you. I love you. (laughs) Wow, that was loud. Okay. Man, can you hear God saying that? If you can't, you need to say, God, open my ears because that is what God is singing over you. And it is loud. And he wants you to hear it. In Psalms 139, I love the, the Psalms 139. A couple of years ago, I memorized the whole chapter. But in verse 15, it says, you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. And I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. How exciting. Before your earthly father ever saw you, your heavenly father saw you. And he laid eyes on you. And he was forming you. And he said, she's going to have this personality. And she's going to look like this. And this is going to be her gift mix. And he was putting us together. It says, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. Man, God thinks about you. He thinks about me, and they're good thoughts. It's not like he's like, we could have done more, you could have done better. No, that's, that's earthly fathers. Our heavenly father, he thinks good thoughts about us. It says they cannot be numbered. I can't even count them, the thoughts that God has about me. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, God is still with me. God is still with you. In Isaiah 43, it talks about how we are precious to God. In Isaiah 49, it says that he does not forget about us. Some of you feel like you're forgotten by your dad, but your heavenly father does not forget about you. And so we've got to know that God is satisfied with us. God loves you. He likes you. I remember I used to think like, well, of course God loves me. I mean, God is love. He has to love everybody, but I don't know that he likes me. You know, I mean, sometimes I can be loud and I can be like, you know, just loud and, and I can be like, have an opinion and I can like, this is my personality and I let, and all that, and I'm not disciplined enough and I'm not this. And, and then when I read Psalms 139, I was like, oh, well, he made me like this. <laughs> he gave me this personality, you know, a sanguine choleric. He gave me the DI personality. He gave me who I am. So he, he is satisfied. He is satisfied with you. And so sometimes people can make us and our dads can make us feel like we should have been somebody else. But God's like, I love how I created you. I love, I like you. God likes you. I love it in the Garden of Eden that when Adam, Adam and Eve sinned, they, they ran and hid. And so many people are hiding from God. But I want you to know that God showed up in the garden. And when God shows up, when you read the, uh, the human flesh of God, then it shows, he shows up as Jesus. So I believe it was Jesus walking in the garden, talking with Adam and Eve. And, and Jesus was walking in the garden as our heavenly father going, Adam and Eve, where are you? And they said, we've hidden because we've sinned. And, God, and Jesus stood in front of them and said, you know what? I'm going to send you out of the garden for your good because I don't want you to live in sin your whole life. But then Jesus said, I'm already making a way for you to come back into relationship with God the Father. And that's what he says to you. You may say, you may say, oh, you don't know what I've done. I've sinned so much. You don't know all the, uh, you don't know the people I've hurt. You don't know all I've done. And, and God the Father says, I've already prepared a way for you to be in relationship with me. He's already making a way. He's not banishing you from the garden. He's providing a way because he is satisfied with you. And he wants to be in relationship with you. The next one is the emotionally distant earthly dad. This is the kind of dad that, you know, they may have been stable. They may have been consistent. They didn't abandon you. They didn't abuse you. They just never expressed emotion to you. You never heard, I love you. They never comforted you. You may have worked, they may have worked hard to provide, but they just weren't there for you emotionally. 
Now, maybe you grew up with a dad like this, and, and I grew up with a dad like this. And I know why. I know in my head why he was like he was. <laughs> I know in my head, but my heart doesn't. And so a lot of you may have grown up with a dad like this, you know, just emotionally wasn't able to be there. And here are three things every child needs to hear from their father. I love you. I'm proud of you. And you're really good at. Some of you have never heard those words. I love you. I'm proud of you. You're really good at. Well, just repeat this after me. Say, I love you. I'm proud of you. And you're really good at. And so maybe your dad, maybe your earthly father never said that to you, but we have the opportunity to say that to our kids. We can change the generational bloodline for our kids. And so when you have never heard these words, it can leave you with an insatiable desire to prove to yourself so that you could hear these words from somebody else. So you, 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 you're an overachiever. And you work hard and you do a lot of things and you're just hoping somebody will say, good job, I'm so proud of you. And you're working for, for an earthly father's affirmation. But I want you to know that God gives you the affirmation that you need. Kids who grew up in an environment like this not only fail to develop a healthy relationship with their fathers, they often struggle to develop healthy, healthy relationships with others because they have never learned to open up emotionally. They don't develop healthy relationships, emotionally connected relationships with their spouse, their kids, and they don't have close friends. When they go through pain, they tend to go through it alone. They may be extroverts with lots of acquaintances, but they don't have really close friends who they depend on and can go deep with. And this used to be me. Because my dad had a hard time emotionally connecting with me. And, and, and so that, but can I tell you that be, as I've gotten to know my heavenly father and trust him and as life heals and you go to God for freedom, that like I am learning to feel, I am learning to, to connect emotionally. And it is awesome. And, it, and I love it. And if we're not careful, if we don't, if we, if we, if we stay in the same cycles, then we'll do the same thing to our kids unless you intentionally work on emotionally connecting and working on your issues you will pass that on to your kids and i want you to know that your heavenly father wants to emotionally connect with you he loves you he's given you so many awesome emotions and he wants to emotionally connect with you it's like the prodigal son. When the son had gone and he had lived a life of sin and he decided to come home, the dad did not stand there like Martha would have and said, well, why did you take half the inheritance? And I told you you should have. And why didn't you? And I wish you would have. And all this kind of stuff. No, the heavenly father picked up his robe, which was a symbol that Jewish men never picked up their robe and ran towards anybody. It would have been shameful to do that, but he didn't care. He saw his son coming. He picked up his robe and he went running towards them. And I want you to know, I don't care what you've done, that the heavenly father is, all you have to do, do is turn and run towards him and he's ready to run towards you. He'll do it awkward. He'll do it afraid. He doesn't care. He wants to connect with you emotionally. And I will dare say, like at the end of the service, when we have the response time, some of you can't wait to get out of the worship center as fast as you can because you don't know how to connect emotionally because that's a moment when you can connect with God. In John 3, 16, it says, for this is how God loved, and it says the world, but put your name in there. For this is how God loved Martha. For this is how God loved you. He gave his one and only son so that when Martha believes in him, she will not perish, but have everlasting life. What that means is God wants to be in relationship with you. And he sent Jesus to this earth to die on the cross, rise again so we can be in relationship with him. Dads, the most significant thing you can do for your kids is just to emotionally connect with them. You need to say to your kids, I love you. I'm proud of you. You're really good at. And say something. 
And if you've never said that in your life, it is going to be the most awkward thing. And it's going to get stuck right here. And you're going to be like, I love it. I mean, like, you're going to be like, it's not, uh." you know, I can't get the words out. You're just going to have to press through and just say, this is the most awkward thing I've ever done. But I want you to know this. I don't want you to die as my son or my daughter and never hear me say this to you. Because once you get it out the first time, then the next time it's easy. And I know, listen, I, I, because I hadn't emotionally connected, guess how, what I started off with our kids is kind of doing that a little bit. And then I said, no, my kids are going to hear me say, I love you. I'm proud of you. You're good at. And so even from the time they were little, we just started doing it awkward until it just became habit. And in, in uh, Stephen Poulter's book, The Father Fracture, he says that emotionally distant dads usually have no idea the damage their emotional distance is causing in their children. They think, I'm doing a good job. I'm providing for my family. They are clueless, he says, that part of being a good provider includes emotional nurturing and active involvement. And it's not just showing up at a, at a sporting event and cheering them on in the sidelines. It's sitting down with them. It's talking to them. It's emotionally connecting. It's asking, how are they doing? How are you feeling? It's being aware. They're a little off today. I wonder what's going on with them. Most Christian men feel like they are good dads if they provide food and shelter for their families. And I say, really? Is this the standard? I mean, possums give their offspring food and shelter. Can we just raise the bar a little bit, you know? Let's be a little bit more than a possum, you know? (gasps) Come on, we got to let God be our role model. You may say, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to connect emotionally. If you get in the word of God, if you get in a connect group, if you do everything that we tell you to do here at C3 for a year, I promise in a year you will be a different dad. Now, moms, let me say this to you. You cannot make up for the lack of emotional connection from the dads. God created dads to love and connect one way, and he created moms to love and connect in another way. And so you cannot overcompensate for the lack of a dad's emotional connection. And I know a lot of you moms are like, your dad really loves you. I know he does. Stop it. (laughs) Because when they sit in my office, here's what they say. If my dad really loved me, he would have told me. My mom's just patronizing. You know what, moms, you need to say, ask your dad if he really loves you or not, but I'm going to teach you about the love of the heavenly father. I'm going to have you in church and I'm going to teach you how to forgive your earthly father. Teach them healthy things, but don't overcompensate for the dad's lack. Teach your kids that God loves them. And so God is a heavenly father who wants to connect with you emotionally. Then we have the angry earthly dad. This is the kind of dad you just never knew quite, quite what to expect from him. If he had a bad day at work, the smallest thing at home would set him off. And maybe alcohol or drugs magnified his outburst. And more than once, you got hurt. You got hurt either verbally, emotionally, or even physically. And of course, in this kind of situation, you never really learn to love this kind of dad because it's hard to love someone you're terrified of. It's hard. I mean, you know, as kids, we keep trying, but it just, it's painful until we learn just to shut it off completely. But your heavenly father is not like that. He is not an angry God. I don't care what you've been taught. He is not an angry God. Your heavenly father loves you. He is for you. Yes, there are times that God disciplines and it may feel difficult, but God says he will use all things together for our good. The, the writer in Hebrew even says, hey, as, as, as earthly dads and as earthly moms, we're going to discipline our kids. And as much as we try to do it, it with a pure heart, sometimes anger is going to get in there. But because of Jesus on the cross, God loves us with, with a pure heart, with peace and compassion. See, because of Jesus dying on the cross, God the Father, I want you to get this, poured out all his anger, all his wrath, all his judgment on Jesus. That's why Jesus is our savior. Jesus carried it all. 
He carried my sin, but then he carried the anger of the Father. So when God, when the Heavenly Father looks at you, he's not angry. He's cheering you on. He wants to be in relationship with you. In Psalms 103.8, it says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. In Romans 8.1, it says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. God is not condemning you. And you, say, you may say, well, you don't know what I've done. And you don't know what's in my past. And you don't know what I even did the other day. God is not condemning you. He wants to heal you. He doesn't want you living that life, not because he's a mean God, but because he knows, he knows sin leads to death. And he came to give you the abundant life. Everything he does is for your good. If you are God's child, not one thing has ever happened to you or will ever happen to you that God will not use for good. And you may say, well, Martha, that's easy for you to say. And if you don't know my story, I was sexually abused as a kid. Guess what? God's used it for my good. I can stand up here and say, you know what? God is good. I love that song we sang. God is good. He is a good father. He is a good, good father. Man, how would that change how we lived our life if we knew our past, present, and future? Everything we go through is going to be used for our good. Then we have not only the the, the heavenly father that God loves us and he is like us. Then we have the earthly father. He's just the absent father, the dad who wasn't there. Did you know 40% of children in America live in fatherless homes? And here's what happens. Kids often interpret the absence of their dad as a personal rejection. I don't care what you tell them. I don't care. I, you can tell them anything and everything. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, if your dad is not around, you feel personally rejected. They think they aren't important enough or good enough. Dads, if you're not in your kids' lives, get in them. Get in them. Because that is how kids feel when their dads are not around. So what happens is for fatherless boys... In the absence of a father figure who could have showed them what it was like to be, to, to be the man that God created them to be, they, they go out and try to prove their masculinity. I, I am a man. They try to prove it. And so ways they reprove it, they try to prove it is through athletics or just being rebellious or becoming very, very sexually active and pornography. And sometimes they even will go into violence or even gang activity. And sometimes our students are joining a gang just because they feel included. Included. And there's male role models. Not because they think a gang is a good thing, but it just is filling a void that their earthly dads aren't filling. And for girls, an absentee father can manifest in similar ways. Sometimes they struggle to develop respect for themselves or confidence in their careers. Sometimes in the absence of a father's love, they crave the attention and care from a man that they never got from their dad. And so they become willing to do whatever to get the attention of a man. And so we have this absentee father, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that your heavenly father promises us that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. He is always with you. Once you start a relationship with him, he is always with you. Look at Psalms 139, 7. It says, it says of God's presence in our life. I can never escape from your spirit, O Lord. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. God is never gonna leave you and never forsake you. The thing that we have to learn to do is to recognize his presence. I have little alarms that go off on my phone and all it says is, God is with you. God's here. God's here with you in this meeting. And it just kind of, they just kind of go off throughout the day because we can get in our day and forget that God's with us. If you're a believer and you're living in sin, God's with you. We don't get to say, okay, God, hey, you just stay over here and I'm gonna go over here. God's like, nope, I'm going with you. I promised I'd never leave you and never forsake you, so I'm going with you. 
God goes with us. He is the father that never leaves me. My dad left me this year. Now, some of you guys may be like, well, yeah, I died. I mean, got sick and died, but he left. But my heavenly father will never leave me for all eternity. And yes, I will be reunited with my dad when we get to heaven, but our relationship will be different. The Bible tells us that things are different. They're perfect and they're awesome and great. But my heavenly father, he will never leave me. He will never abandon me. And so I need to get to know him. So what do you do? Okay, so you're like, okay, I've, I've separated my earthly father from my heavenly father. Now what? I need to get to know who God is, but now what do I do with my earthly father? The second thing is you've got to forgive your earthly dad. You've got to realize that your earthly dad is a sinner just like you. He was born with sin and he needs a savior just like you. And so you've got to learn to forgive. In Luke 6, 27 and 28, it says, the Bible tells us to love your enemies. So you may be here and say, I hate my dad. Great, you get to love your enemies. <laughs> you got to do good to those who hate you. My dad is mean, awesome. You get to serve him. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you. Now I've done multiple sermons on forgiveness and we don't have enough time for me to, to go into all of it. So you can go look those up online. But I do wanna tell you this. When I have gotten honest with God and started to walk in forgiveness for my dad and I wrote and burned some letters, casting all my cares on the Lord, I wrote some letters. I remember when I first started, cause there, you, like you just didn't talk back to my dad. So I remember when I first started, it was like, dear dad, and I just kind of was being really surfacy. And the Holy Spirit said, you're going to burn this letter when you get done. And I went to town. And I went to tell him my dad a few things that I never got to, you know, like, and I probably didn't need to tell him to his face. But anyway, I just cast all my cares on the Lord. I told him everything how I was feeling and everything that was going on. And if, you, and if you've listened to my forgiveness sermons, you know that after you write a letter and you burn it, then you do a gratitude list. And it was in the gratitude list when I chose to give a sacrifice of thanks. And I, when I always make myself and I encourage people, when you write about somebody, your first five to 10 things you're thankful for need to be about that person. And what I discovered was, yes, as mad and frustrated and angry and let down or whatever it was, I was with my earthly dad. As I began to give thanks, my heavenly father helped me to realize there were some really great things about my dad. And here I wanna tell you this today. You don't have to choose, do I love or hate my earthly dad? Sometimes it's both. So I gotta forgive the things where he hurt me and I've gotta to choose to love. And I've gotta pray for those who have hurt me. Some of you are like, you don't know. And listen, I've worked with so many people on writing and burning. I've worked on this whole father fracture for years with people. And they're like, I don't have anything to be thankful for for my dad. I'm like, well, he did donate the sperm that created you. Can we start there? <laughs> ah, yes, you know. You can find one thing to be thankful for. Make, give a sacrifice of thanksgiving. It will change you. Forgiveness only involves one person. Reconciliation involves two. Forgiveness only involves one. I can forgive my earthly dad. You can do it. See, I can't help what happened to me. I can't help out of my dad's own hurt how he hurt me. I can't help that. But I am responsible for my healing. You are responsible for your healing. And can I tell you, it is great and awesome. When my dad passed away in June, we had six weeks from the time he got really sick and was in the hospital. Like I was fine because I'd written and burned to my dad. I had found things I was thankful for. I had forgiven him. I was good and I was able to serve him the last six weeks of his life like never before. And there, there are people that in my family that hadn't done that and they couldn't spend more than five minutes or 10 minutes in the room. Why? Because they were just so conflicted. They didn't know what they were feeling. Then I have some people who just avoid how they're feeling because now they're like, he's gone. How can I say I was ever mad at him? Can just deal with your dad issues? Just forgive him. Just let it go and work on your healing. And if you're like, how do I do that? We have a group called Freedom. And that's part of what Freedom does is it helps you forgive and know who God truly is. Come on, that's clapping by some Freedom people. 
And then last but not, oh, let me just say this. Let me say this. I don't want to skip over this. If you're a dad who's sitting out there and feeling very overwhelmed by how you failed, then let me tell you this. Just go apologize to your kids. Just admit it. Ask them to forgive you and point them to the everlasting heavenly father. Can I tell you that is such a gift? Dads, if you would just go and say, this is awkward. I know I haven't been a great dad. Maybe I've been the avoider. I haven't emotionally been there. Maybe I was too abused. Whatever it is, just go and apologize. Don't you know that's the longing of every one of our hearts? So dads, let me encourage you, do it awkward, just do it. But in closing, dads, moms, parents, here's what we need to do. We've got to forgive our earthly dads and we've got to choose to follow our heavenly father. And, and during the first service, during worship, the Holy Spirit just gave me this visual of here's what a lot of us, here's how a lot of us are living. It's the little kid inside of us and, and we're just, we're, we're, we're at our dad's feet and we're just like begging him, like, will you bless me? Will you, will you approve of me? Will you love me? Will you, will you be there? And we're, and we're just, and, and it just, we're just begging, begging, begging and nothing. But I tell you, when you come over here to your heavenly father, there's no begging. It's just receiving. God, I just receive everything that you, you give me. You tell me your hand of blessing is on my head. I receive that. You tell me your favor surrounds me like a shield. You tell me that I am the head and not the tail, that I'm above and not beneath. You tell me that there is no condemnation, that you love me, you like me, you are for me. And I just receive everything that you have for me. There's no begging. It's just worship. So today, let me tell you, it's Jesus, your eternal heavenly father. That's who you're craving. That's who you want to be in a relationship with. Some of our earthly fathers are so controlling, but your heavenly father is not controlling. He says, you have to choose. He's not gonna make you be in relationship with him. He says, you choose, you choose. Jesus is the everlasting father. He never disappoints. He never forsakes. He never leaves you. He never dies. He is always faithful, always hopeful. He always loves you no matter what. He's the father's heart that you've been seeking. It's Jesus. It's Jesus who you seek. Right now, I just want everybody just to bow your head and close your eyes. And I just wanna ask you the question, do you know your heavenly father? Do you know him? He died to remove your sin so you could have a relationship with him. He wants to be in relationship with you. And so today you can start that relationship. And he, your heavenly father, will help you forgive and love your earthly father and do things you thought were impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And so if you're here and you're like, I wanna start this relationship with my heavenly father, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God and that he died to pay the price for your sin and he rose again victoriously, proving he is fully God, you will be saved. And so I'm gonna ask the believers to join us in this prayer to encourage you as you say it. So just repeat after me, say, dear Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross and making a way for me to come to God. I receive this extravagant gift and ask you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I give you all of me and ask you to turn my life around for the glory of God. Forgive me of my sin, fill me with your spirit and help me to live the life you died to give me. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, there's a response card in the seat pocket in front of you. And I want you to take it and fill it out. We want to help you grow in your relationship with your heavenly father. And if you're here today, I'm going to pray another prayer over you. And, and, you know, the Bible says we overcome by the word of our testimony. And I just want to pray because I have lived this sermon out. But can I tell you, it is awesome when you do things God's way. And I just want to speak a prophetic word over you through a prayer. But let me, let me say this to you before we do. When we do response times, that's a time for you to connect with God. 
And some of you, as soon as the response time starts, you want out of here because you don't know how to emotionally connect. So let me encourage you, stay in the atmosphere. It won't take long. It doesn't take long. We'll have you out of here in just a few minutes. But just maybe all you do is just sit and listen to the words of the song and and hear the Father sing them loudly over you. But you're going to have to learn how to emotionally connect, which means it's going to be awkward. It's going to be uncomfortable at times. So start today. Start today and respond during the response stations. So let me pray for you. God, we come to you right now, Lord, and I know that a message like this is, is not easy. And yet, God, you gave us earthly fathers and you knew that they would be impactful on how we see you. So God, today, help us to separate who they are from who you are. God, I pray for revelation and words of knowledge and God, just just supernaturally that you would give people even visions and dreams of who you are, what a perfect heavenly father looks like. And God, I pray that each person here, that you would give them the strength and the boldness to forgive their earthly fathers and God, and to run to you. I pray for healing. God, I thank you that Jesus came to set us free and he came to set us free from the hold and and the hurt that even our heavenly fathers, I mean, our earthly fathers and our mothers have placed on us. God, we run to you today and say, heal us, set us free. God, thank you that you are everything that we need, that you are the great I am, our perfect heavenly father. In Jesus' name we pray.